and welcome to the fourth debunking video in this series where we tackle the burning question of what is underneath the flat earth let's get to it what's underneath the flat earth This is obviously an unanswerable question, since the assumed edge has never been known to be reached. Oh good, we can move on then. Well that was a nice short video. Oh, you're not done are you? Damn it! Many people suppose that whether the earth is round or flat, that either way, it still must be floating in the middle of outer space. Oh boy. You're going to deny the existence of space, aren't you? But the idea of outer space goes out the window with the round earth theory. Many religious texts support an immovable earth that has its foundations on which it is laid and its pillars by which it is supported. Ah, the but holy book argument. Look, retard, I'll say this once and only once. Ah, who am I kidding? I'm going to have to repeat myself on this point all throughout this series, aren't I? God damn it. Okay, here goes. So listen carefully all you retarded flat earthers out there. Nobody, and I mean nobody, with more than two brain cells in their skull cares about what the group of desert dwelling goat herders living out a meager existence in the Middle East 2000 years ago thought about how the world looked and worked. That is not proof of anything in any sense of the word. Moreover, they didn't know better. What's your excuse, you fucking dingbat? We simply don't know. Then why are we even talking about this? But we do know that the Earth is obviously fixed in place, as we can tell by our everyday experience of non-movement. Hmm. Okay, here's a concept you might have difficulty with. But like Sisyphus, I'll try this exercise in futility. Perception of movement is relative. That means, and I'm now explaining it for the retards out there, that you only feel you are moving if you have something you can compare your relative position to. So, if you are sitting in a train and the blinds are pulled, you don't feel yourself moving, because you are moving with the train at the same speed as the train. So relative to the train you are not moving, so you feel nothing. The same goes for the earth, you and the atmosphere around you are all moving at the same speed. So, just like the example with the train, you feel nothing. I know this is hard for you flat ass, with all your, but I feel nothing, so I'm not moving. But trust me on this one, it is true. What we see in the skies above are illuminated objects making circles around us just as it appears. Oh, oh, it is the earth rotating. Just putting it out there as an option. Whatever this place may be, it's the center of all we survey. Citation needed, please. I'm sorry, dude, but I'm starting to get the impression that all your claims consist of mainly free imagination bullshit, just sprinkled with a little of I don't know, so therefore God on top. Hope to God I'm wrong, and you at least at some point start giving your audience a little respect and show some actual proof. Won't hold my breath, though. Some say that the Earth is the floor of the universe. <laughs> In the ancient Hebrew conception of the universe, we are surrounded by the waters above and the waters below, known as the Great Deep. Just another run of the mill, but no holy book argument. So, I'll refer you to my previous comment on that. The deepest hole ever drilled into the earth was a total of about seven and a half miles. The very core of the earth is nothing more than wild speculation, if not another malicious lie. No, no, no. Fucking no. The composition of the core of the earth is not pure fucking speculation. I know that pure speculation is what you do, and is all you know, but don't fucking project all your own stupidity onto the scientist you're criticizing, you nitwit. Whenever there's an earthquake, Volcanic eruption or an atomic bomb has been tested. It's 
It sends seismic waves through the earth to be picked up again on the surface by measuring instruments. So, you have an earthquake somewhere on earth, like here, that sends seismic waves through the earth, like this. Now, if the earth was solid all the way through, we would get measurements all around the globe. But that's not what we get. What we get is, on the exact opposite side of the earth, nothing. A huge blind spot that not only let us know that the center of the earth is liquid, because we know that seismic waves cannot travel through liquid, and we also know that because of the earth's mass, which we know because of the earth's gravitational pull, and the subsequent pressure the earth then exerts on the liquid in the center, the center of the liquid core is solid. I'm not here going to spend 20 minutes telling you how we also know the exact composition of the earth, and not just solid, liquid, solid. Maybe if enough people ask for it in the comments, I'll consider making a video just explaining all about the Earth's composition. But this is enough to debunk this flat out point. Because if we compare the flat Earth with the globe Earth, and more importantly what we see when we measure the seismic waves around the Earth, this is what we get. On a globe Earth, no problem. We see the waves propagate around the globe until they hit a huge blind spot on the exact opposite side of the globe which is a reasonable result, if you factor in a solid crust and mantle and a liquid center. The flat earth model, on the other hand, runs into some problems though. Problem 1. Giving the speed of the waves through solid matter, if they were traveling along the surface, they would look like they were accelerating. Whereas on a globe earth, the speed is constant. They just take a shortcut through the earth. So, first thing flat earthers have to explain is why. By what mechanism does this acceleration happen? But the far bigger problem the flat earth model has is the huge blind spot in the measuring of the waves. On a globe earth it happens directly on the opposite side of the earth which present no problem. But on a flat earth the not only placement of the blind spot which seems arbitrary but again why by what mechanism does this happen? And why can we start to measure them again on the other side of the blind spot? Go on, I'll wait while you gather your notes to come with an answer. So what's under the earth? That remains a mystery to us all. Then why the fuck are you even asking the question then, you fucking retard? Ah, so you can speculate wildly about your own fantasy reality without all the annoying restrictions reality puts in your way. It's la la land over reality. Gotcha. I think we're all getting the picture by now. Another thing that you can research is what's inside the earth. Multi-billion dollar deep underground military bases known as DUMBs. D-U-M-Bs, right? More fucking wild, substantiated speculation. Okay, and where's your proof? Do you have a picture? A video clip? Have you been there yourself? Do you even fucking know anybody who has been there? Or is your whole proof the movie Resident Evil whose animation you used in the background? I'm going to take a wild guess of my own here. It's the movie, isn't it? You fucking retard. And we're done with debunking this question. I swear, I'm losing IQ point for every video I make having to listen to all this dribble. <sighs> okay, subscribe and check in in a week to hear the debunking of the fourth question. What about the ships and boats disappearing over the horizon? Oh god, I'm going to end up as a drooling retard in a nursing home after this one, aren't I? I don't want to live on this planet anymore.